But I just wanted to do a quick overview of some of the terms that we're going to be talking about and some of the issues that are coming up. So um, the first thing is I just want to thank Celeste Drake, who did this first, and I copied most of her slides. Who She works for the AFL-CIO, and she did an excellent presentation for legislators this summer. Um, just here's what the TPP is. It's the Trans-Pacific Partnership. And you can see all of the countries, um, the ones in the dark um, red are thinking about getting into it, and the ones in the lighter red um, are, are already in it. And the map doesn't really show the colors very well. <laughs> but just to be clear, it's 12 different countries, all the countries in NAFTA, US, Mexico, and Canada, and then those countries that are listed. What's unusual about this agreement is that other countries can join in later after it's been finalized. So it could include all of these other countries, Thailand, Korea, Cambodia, uh, China. Uh, so it makes it a, a really sweeping agreement and, and uh, you know, raises a lot of issues because of that. Um, just very quickly, um, it has been described as a 21st century agreement. It's been going on the negotiations for almost three years. Uh, but from what we know about it publicly, it's very similar to NAFTA. It's not necessarily um, that much different from uh, NAFTA uh, in a, some of these areas like Buy American Services and Investment. So this is just something to keep in mind. It seems very similar to NAFTA, so if people know how NAFTA works, the TPP probably is going to work in a very similar way. Um, and then just a proviso that um, you know, these negotiations are secret, as are the documents. So um, basically, this presentation is based on what's in the public uh, you know, press. Um, and then these, again, it's very similar to NAFTA. These are some of the issues that are unlikely to be different um, from that. Um, and just a reminder that um, we did a review of the Trans-Pacific Partnership and s picked three issues to look at, and they're in this assessment, tobacco, pharmaceuticals, and procurement. And that's available on the website. And those are still live issues. Their goal is to finish by October. That's not going to happen, but it is possible. It could be by the end of the year. Um, they, the public, they're saying publicly only political issues are left, but those are all the issues we care about. Uh, athletic f footwear tariffs, tobacco, pharmaceuticals, uh, financial services. Um, okay, so then there's this other thing. It's called the TTIP, really confusing, TPP, TTIP. So I call it the US, EU, European Union Free Trade Agreement. Um, all of those countries um, that are in yellow um, are in the EU, and then there's other um, countries that have joined in in 2013 in, in orange, um, and then other countries are seeking to join in. So it could be a very sweeping agreement as well. You put the two together and you pretty much have, you know, the world. Um, so again, these negotiations have just started. The next round is in October. Um, there's less issues around poor countries that might have low wages um, in terms of job loss. But just like the Trans-Pacific Partnership, there's a lot of issues around um, whether there's the right to uh, legislate and regulate. And um, I refer to this uh, leaked paper that um, is a paper that the European Union negotiators uh, laid out their initial um, things that they wanted to do. Uh, and that would be to preempt state regulations. <laughs> um, so here are some of the issues uh, for both of these agreements. They have to do with whether um, we want them to bind us to procurement. That's what the state government itself buys. And we have standards around sweat-free labor by American uh, was discussed this year in the legislature. And we also have a law that says the legislature has to be uh, consulted as well as the governor um, before they do that. Um, another issue is uh, something that we've talked about a lot, which is the uh, foreign investors, or we're talking about companies when we say investors being able to go around the court system and go to arbitration panels if they want to challenge um, various regulations. Um, another big issue is services chapters, and this has to do with financial, uh, any kind of um, service. It could be banking, it could be the internet. Um, these are a whole bunch of different issues I don't have time to go through. Um, but it, it goes again to the authority of the state to regulate or license 
uh, in a whole variety of areas. Um, another issue we've talked a great deal about uh, is drug pricing and whether or not um, either or both of these agreements will have provisions that might limit our ability to negotiate rebates in the Medicaid program and in other programs that help keep drugs affordable and, and have implications for our budget. Um, another big issue is athletic footwear. We had a whole hearing on that in Skowhegan. Um, and if uh, tariffs are reduced to zero, then the costs of um, main made products will be um, way more expensive than uh, products coming in from other countries like Vietnam. And so that will really uh, hurt those uh, facilities and the people who work there. Big issue, finally, is fast track, whether or not um, Congress should, uh, how, how they will make their decision about whether or not to approve um, either or both of these agreements. Um, should it be done in a fast track manner where there's limited debate, no uh, amendments to it, an up or down vote? Um, if so, then what do you do if a mistake is made or if the agreement doesn't really meet the objectives? Keep in mind it's being negotiated in a, in a secret process so we don't know what's really going on behind those closed doors. Um, so that's just a very quick run through uh, to just try to set the stage um, before our first presentation.